listening to KCFB Ferguson, 89.5 The Wave, and this is Fear the Dead Air, with your host, Jazz Hands. When civilization ends, dance fast. That is right, you are listening to the one, the only, Dead Air, or Fear the Dead Air, here on 89.5 The Wave. I'm your host, your friendly neighborhood DJ Jazz Hands, rocking out in the studio, uh... Here to talk about last Sunday's epic Fear the Walking Dead episode, which, uh, just FYI, spoiler warnings before I go any, any further, and FYI too, today it's just gonna be little old me. Nobody else, just me, talking about, kinda going over it last Sunday's epic Fear the Walking Dead episode. And I gotta say, Fear, you're, you're, you're starting to get to me. You're really starting to get to me. I, I, I'm watching you. I'm watching you even closer now. This was a really good episode, but I'm still kinda torn about it. And I'm going to I'm going to fully explain that here in a second. The episode's title was Blood in the Streets, which I don't think there was too too much blood shed in the streets. Um there was definitely some on the boat and it was I really I I, I cuz it's been a minute since I've seen this first season, but like that was before um Everything that happened with The Walking Dead and Negan. But I, I believe this is the first time that Travis and the crew have actually run into people who are deliberately out to hurt them. And it was it was interesting to see these people work. And I don't know. I got I got some complaints. I got some I got some goodies. I'm just I'm excited to get right into this review. So let's let's, let's just dive right in. Right in. So, first thing that we see is Nick washing up on shore, which I, you know, when I first saw that uh, last week for the um, little premiere that they gave for what was going on um, or what was going to happen next episode, I wasn't sure what was really going on. I mean, at first I thought maybe Strand, you know, went psycho and when you first see Nick wash up on shore, that's what's going to happen at the end of the episode. And it was going to be the episode was going to be the story about how, you know, something might've happened to the Abigail strand might've gone crazy. They might've tried to mutiny and strand, you know, might've tried to attack a whole bunch of them and Nick kind of fell overboard. But then, you know, when you see his clothes in the bag, it's like, okay, so he planned on doing it. And there was, there was a really couple reasons. Like I got scared because I really, really thought that he was jumping overboard to try to kind of, um, like he, I thought he was really jumping overboard because maybe it's like, maybe he just needs a fix. I don't know. See, Nick's the type of character where, um, I, I really am starting to warm up to him. I really am starting to warm up to him and I'm starting to like him as a character. I hated him in season one. And frankly, I, I'll be honest, if he dies, I wouldn't, as of this point right now where he is, where he's at now, I wouldn't be too sad. He still has, he still has a lot more growing to go as a character, in my opinion, um, for me to really be like, you know, Walking Dead survival of oh god please don't die oh god please don't die I need this character I love this character you know I I don't think anybody's saying if Nick dies we riot you know I've seen a couple stuff where it's like well if Johnny Depp dies we riot and <laughs> that's kind of funny because he does look like Johnny Depp and I'm said of I said it once and I'll say it again but I digress so he he hasn't come around full circle and they're still this kind of wary and I really hope they don't go down this path of Nick kind of relapsing. And going back to his drug addict ways, uh, that's still a big, big fear. And I, th- I think that's maybe what they're supposed to do or, or what the character is supposed to kind of do. He's supposed to give you something. So you're like, oh, I really like this guy. And then maybe slip back and, or, or at least be that one to instill that kind of fear of, oh, God, he's going to, you know, uh, shoot up or he, he's you know going to try to get high. And it's going to be one of those things where you're, you're, you're constantly on guard and even maybe a couple seasons, unless it's like two or three seasons where you know he doesn't, he could very well start using again. Like he, it could be season four of Fear the Walking Dead and he could start using. So he's, he's definitely, he's definitely scary kind of to watch at some points because you want to like him, but you, you, you don't, you don't know what he's going to do. 
you know, you don't know what he's going to do. And, and and seeing this, that he jumped over and he got dressed and, you know, everything, it, it was, it was interesting. And you're like, what are you doing, Nick? What are you doing? And I really liked, and, and okay, I'm going to say one thing, like how strong was that tent? Really? When he killed that one Walker, uh, to, you know, pull a Rick and Glenn. You know, the good old boys from season one. You know, when, when, when he killed that walker, how strong was that tent? Because that tent seemed like, you know, that that, that I lean up against a tent and it's going to fall over. I think if a child leans up against a tent, it's going to fall over. But that walker was, you know, a walker. Enough to where it, you know, a bunch of them can, you know, tip over a steel fence. You know, and of course we can debate about, you know, the structural security of a tent and a fence and the fact that there was more. But still, it's like, how strong was that tent? But I thought it was actually really interesting how he got that kill and how Nick did kind of wash, you know, uh, he, he definitely knows how to survive. And he's and that's where I think that's where I think he definitely comes into use. But. I'm wondering when that's going to kind of stop because he he definitely is kind of like the Aaron boy. I wouldn't say he's like Glenn, but he's like Glenn in, cer- in certain aspects to where he'll do the stuff that nobody else really wants to do. He'll if, if Strand needs him to swim to shore and go pick up my friend because we need him for this. Yeah, OK, sure. Why not? You know, hey, let's go to shore because we need to do this. OK. Hey, we need to do this. OK, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. So like. He's very, very helpful, and he's definitely the go-to guy, but I'm wondering when, because, I mean, Glenn was the go-to guy, and essentially still is, but I'm wondering when he's either going to, you know, maybe stop living in, not, because I wouldn't say he's living in, like, a dream world, but, like, he's definitely living in a part, and or in, 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 he's definitely living in this, like, area of, or this mindset, I should say, of, he knows how to survive or something. I, I'm, I'm not too sure. And it's definitely weird, but I'm wondering if there's going to be a point where he's going to say, okay, I'm done kind of running around and, you know, doing all this and, and, and being the one to have to go out there and make these hard calls um, to do, to pick up, you know, groceries or something like that. So it's definitely interesting. And, and, and we see him, uh, I don't know. It's so weird. It's so weird. Cause like I said, you know, he's, He's, a, he's an interesting character. He really, really is. And and the more I watch it, the more I am kind of starting to like him, the more uh, yeah, I'm worried that he is going to give me something to not like. And and it might be a little bit of a pre, maybe prerequisite or maybe, I don't know. It, it's one of those things where it's like, I really want to like the show, but I'm also very hard on the show because I know what's going to happen. And you know how good it can get. And that's where, like I said, I, I want the show to be do something different with something that we haven't seen. And as of right now, uh, the way the show's progressing, I still could be wrong. And I really, really hope. Because I've always said since, since day one of fear to now, I've always said I really, really hope this show is about good people that go bad in this world. Whereas Rick's group are the people that are trying to survive and stay good. So I want these, you know, dynamics. And of course, Rick's group is going to be leagues, leagues above. And there's definitely going to be diversity because there's going to be, the, you know, the main one. You're going to have uh, maybe some people be bad in that group, some people be good in that group. So I, I, I don't know what we're going to do or I don't know what will, or not what we'll do, but I, you know, I don't know how they're going to structure it, but I really hope that fear and it doesn't look like it's going to be it looks like it's going to be basic good people surviving but i want there to i want it to be travis like show the evolution of travis or maddie you know going bad strand kind of going bad um and we're gonna get to strand trust me we're gonna get to strand you need to talk about strand because he (laughs) boy let me tell you But I really hope that these characters kind of give us something different from The Walking Dead to where we'll watch it for the bad guys. We'll watch the evolution of how essentially I want, I'll be honest, I want Travis to turn into somebody like Negan. I want Travis to have this big group 
and you know us to kind of kind of be justifying like oh yeah you know uh, I, I'm with you Travis I'm with you Travis you're such a nice guy and stuff and then when you really take a step back and look at the bigger picture you're like oh Travis you're bad you're a bad guy and I want that I want that because it's something new and it's something interesting I want to see good people go bad and and not this bad guy that they just threw randomly threw at us I'm gonna talk about him because that. That's where I kind of start getting salty again. But either way, Nick, back to, back to kind of Nick, you know. Nick's character in this episode was really, really interesting. I mean, he, he did a lot, but he didn't do a lot. There wasn't, you know, a lot of character development in certain aspects. But, like, there still was this core of he's evolving because he's going to be the go-to guy. And... You know, and one thing too, there was a helicopter in the beginning of the shot. Like I really thought that when I first saw the opening scene too, I really thought it was going to be Nick washes up on shore to that base that Strand was talking about and something happened, you know, and you see the helicopter and stuff. So it looks like the military is still active, which kind of contradicts um, season one where they say that the military has been disbanded. We don't have any, but we, you know, we were not hearing from anybody, blah, 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 this, that, or the other. But, you know, that's, that's where I'm interested to see kind of what actually did happen with the military and AMC, if you're listening and, um, yeah, I said this last week and I'm going to say it again. If you actually, uh, want to have another spinoff series called, uh, you know, fight or kill the walking dead. Um, <coughs> Uh, you can check me out on Facebook at facebook.com slash stldeadair, and we can talk about a deal. <laughs> anyway, that's just jazz hands being stupid. Um, but no, so I, it's definitely interesting, and I'm wondering what the kind of governmental, you know, dynamic is as of right now with the military, with what's going on, protecting the border, you know. It's going to be interesting, and I really kind of, I, I do hope that, because Walking Dead definitely has its stride now, and it's way too far gone to really know what happened um, military-wise. We still could, but I really hope that Fear can play off of that and be like, okay, this is kind of what happened with the government, and this is why um, they went down. And, you know, all that good stuff. Real quick, too, because the scene also starts, the, 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 the show also starts off with, uh, you know, uh, Travis and Madison you know, talking about what Strand did, and, and, and I, I really like what uh, Yvette Nicole Brown said on Talking Dead of Alex telling the uh, the group um, that they ran into, I'll, I'll call them the pirates, um, that, that they ran into about the boat and where it went and, and who all these people are, because that's interesting, and I hope Alex does come back, because there's only three episodes left of the season, which kind of caught me off guard. I mean, it's it's weird. I, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, but there's only three more episodes left of this, this season, and I'm going to kind of get into it a little bit later, but no, so I, you get this kind of weird, interesting dynamic between Travis and, and Madison, where they're talking about, you know, what Strand did to... Alex last episode and, and everything and you know Travis clearly seems mad about it Travis seems yeah, he's like I'm gonna throw him overboard I'm so mad they were kids they didn't do anything wrong and Madison sticks up for 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 Strand which I think is Ma- Madison's kind of going to play like you know going for bad to bad for Strand you know she's definitely she'll definitely be the one to confront him but she's also going to you know, bad for him, and I think in that aspect, their group dynamics really strong to where, you know, she'll side with Travis when she feels it's right, but she'll also stride, you know, side with Strand. Or it could be one of those things where she's just as afraid to be kicked off the boat as Travis is. You know, I think Travis is slowly getting to the point where he's just like mutiny. We're gonna go into a mutiny. We're just going to go into a mutiny, and we're going to throw Strand overboard, and be done. We're done. We're done. Um, But Madison, I think, definitely is... She's trying to look at the bigger picture, and it's like, hey, if these people are going to accept Strand, we kind of have to play by his rules. And there was a line that she said that it it got me salty. (laughs) It really got me salty, to where she was like, you know, I don't want to just survive, Travis. I want to live. I want to start over. Blah 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 blah. And I, 
my first thought, I was like, okay, Andrea, Andrea 2.0, a- Andrea, a- a- Andrea's clone. Let me, uh, let me sit you down. Let me tell you something. What's going to happen. Okay. In this world, you don't have the right yet to talk about that. You just don't want to survive. You haven't experienced a lot yet to just want to try, you know, to not just want to try to survive. You've since the apocalypse have happened, has happened. You've been sitting at home playing board games. You've been, you've, you've run around a little bit and you've, you did have your one thing at the end of season one, but you deliberately put yourself in that situation. Um, you've been on a boat a bunch of the episodes, you don't have the right to say, I don't want to just survive because you're sitting high and mighty where others are running around in the dirt, in the mud, you know, fighting off hordes upon hordes upon hordes of walkers. You don't have the right yet to say, I just want to survive. It seems very, I don't know. It was one of those lines where it's like, I guess I could see where she's coming from. And if this was like maybe two more seasons in if this was season three and it was six months later and they've been running around on land or you know jumping from you know uh, land to land to land to island to island to island and stuff um maybe but from what i've seen essentially they're a week or two into the apocalypse yeah you don't have the right yet to say i want to start over and i just i just want to i want to uh live I, I I want some place to live. You don't you don't have the right to say that yet because it gets worse. It gets so much worse out there, and you need to be prepared. And ah, I don't know. It was just one of those lines that kind of like took me out of it again, and really made me realize that uh, essentially these characters haven't seen anything yet. Uh, they they haven't really gone through as much. Um, now the kids have. The kids are starting to get there. And uh, honestly, it's kind of one of those things where it started focusing on the kids. Uh, I think I'd be kind of more interested. You know, you, 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 Chris is starting to become his own. Nick's definitely becoming his own. Alicia. I'm going to talk about Alicia. I'm definitely going to talk about Alicia because she. <laughs> she. I'm going to talk about Alicia, man, because that was. That was definitely interesting. That was definitely, definitely interesting. Anyway, so yeah, I, I think Madison right, really right now does not have the, 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 the right to complain, but I think it's interesting that she stuck up for Strand and then even went out, you know, to get Strand at the end. I think... I think with with she going with her going with her kind of sticking up for Strand and her going out to pick up Strand uh, further on in the future, I think it's going to be one of those things where Strand might come around because he's really thinking because because that is one thing I will say about Madison she's playing as a team player, she is playing as a team player, and that is one thing that I like and so I I really hope because she will back up Strand and then back up Travis that she. It's one of those things where she could try to play both sides, kind of like how the governor and or how Andrea legit was with the governor and Rick, um, and try to get them to you know be peace. But essentially, you're going to have to pick one side, and if you pick the wrong side, you're going to lose. Uh, Andrea has shown us that, and but I really think that, and I'm hoping that because she be because she allowed or because she she stuck up for strand and because she went after strand strand's gonna be like okay well now i'm gonna start giving you a little bit more because you clear you stuck you stuck up for me and i'm going to allow you to kind of have more of a say and more leniency on my boat you're starting to come into a fold so but um two the the uh, I want to talk about the bad guys real quick because uh, we're going to be taking a break shortly and the rest of it's pretty much going to be a little bit about uh, Strand and Alicia, the last, the you know, part two of what I do, but uh, what I want to talk about because, but the, uh, the pirates, man, the pirates, I don't, I, to me, honestly, and this is going to just this is me personally. I felt like fear kind of got a cliff note of what's going to happen in the walking dead. And so they were like, Oh, 
they got like a bad guy or we need a bad guy kind of like the governor let's have this random random dude you'd be like oh yes well he's very interested to see you he's very interested and he just walks on and he's like oh you couldn't uh, do this you couldn't do that he tried to i don't know he mm. i didn't like him I'll be honest, I did not like him. I did not like that guy at all. Not for the reasons that they were trying to be, though. I love a good villain, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love a good villain. I loved the governor when he was running around doing his stuff. I I, I liked the Terminites. You know, they were creepy, they were weird. The cop could have sat in back, but, you know, I love Negan. I love Negan. I've been waiting for Negan forever. I've said it on the show, you know, countless times, and I'll say it again. I love Negan, and I'm glad he's finally here. But this bad guy just kind of came out of nowhere. Um, was like, oh, let's. You couldn't clean her up. We're blah, 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 blah. and it's like I don't know. I, I felt that they were trying to get like uh you to like not like this guy, like with the governor. Or with Negan or something like that. Or they were trying to introduce this character. But they didn't give us anything to go on except, oh, he's eccentric. He's a good leader, but he doesn't know how to survive. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I don't, I didn't like him. I didn't like him. I thought, and this is, this is kind of something that I want to say um, a little bit. Another kind of little thing that I've noticed about the show that kind of annoys me. It's, they, there's a lot of people in this show that act superior, if that makes any sense. They act very, you know, smart and very sophisticated and, you know, very this and that. And and, and it's like, no, get to the nitty gritty. You started getting to the nitty gritty. Now you're kind of going to trying to have like a twist with an artistic view on it. And it's like, I, I'm fine with some of it. Um, but... You got to build up the characters first. And that's where I was going to kind of talk about it. I'll just say it now. Um, Because we only got three episodes left. um, I think those three episodes could be very, very good. But if it doesn't pick up royally again, it will be one of those things where I'll say, okay, this was a good start of a season. Part A of a season. And then maybe we could fully flush out the characters a little bit more in part B. But because it's just part A, or because it's just, we only got three more episodes, I don't think there's going to be enough time to fully develop these characters and kind of flush them out a little bit more. You know, we there's, there's nothing that essentially, besides kind of situations that they put themselves in, that has kind of really developed the characters. And, and, and like I said, if this was a part A and then we're going to get a part B and we are, we're going to get like maybe, you know, 15, 16 episodes, something like that of the show, then I could be like, okay, well there's fully time to develop. You can have kind of slower episodes. You can have fast paced episodes and you can fully do this. But because there's only three more episodes left, I, it's like you started getting me and now you're, and that's not necessarily saying because if if every episode is the same with you know eight, you know um, what was it sixteen episodes or something like that, you, it's not going to be as good and you're going to get bored with the series and you're probably going to be done. You're probably going to be done. But as a, if you know from from a story standpoint, you you need to start picking it up. If 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 you're only going to have these short seasons then you need to start picking it up and picking it up and picking it up and picking it up because essentially with only three episodes left, I'm going to look at season one and season two as, well, season two, some stuff happened, but it wasn't definitely, it, it wasn't enough and, and I didn't get anything out of it. I, I didn't get anything out of it. I'm sorry. Like, I'm liking where the series is going and I think it's getting better. The last two episodes and this episode especially, I really did like because stuff's starting to pick up more. But if you don't have any other stories or are because of the pacing, I should say, of how short your seasons are going to be, then you need to start picking it up a lot quicker. You need to start picking it up way quicker and have crazy, crazy outlandish stuff going on, 
You know, I, that, that that's my personal opinion, though. That's my personal opinion. But because the seasons are so short, I really feel that they need to start picking it up a lot more. Because, like I said, if this was part A to a season and then we were going to take a break and go to maybe after the summer or, or you know, take like a month or two off and then go back into it, uh, you know, maybe July or, 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 you know, June or something like that. Um, and, and, you know, you have eight episodes again so you have eight for part a eight for part b you can fully flush out and actually enjoy these characters a lot more but because and you could do you could tell more and then you could have slower episodes and and a normal build you can have a normal you know gradual build but because there's only three episodes left if it doesn't start ramping up soon the season's essentially gonna gonna it's gonna end up being worthless again and i hate saying that i really really do i don't like saying that but it's gonna be worthless because you're not doing anything. But I've rambled on too, too much about <laughs> about the structures and what I think. But uh, we're going to take a quick, quick break here on 89.5 The Way Fear the Dead Air. And I'll be back right after this because I, I need to still talk about Strand and I need to still talk about Alicia because there's a lot more to go over in this episode. So stay tuned, everybody, because I will be back. Fear the dead air is taking a little break. Don't worry, we'll be back. Like the dead rising, we are back. You are listening to Fear the Dead Air, only on 89.5 The Wave. You're listening to Fear the Dead Air here on 89.5 The Wave. I'm your host, your friendly neighborhood DJ, Jazz Hands. Absolutely loving today. And if you haven't gotten what we're talking about, we're talking about last on this epic Fear the Walking Dead episode. Now, I, I talked a little bit about Nick and, and his whole kind of development within this 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 episode. I've talked a little bit about Madison uh, and her dealio. Um, I, I, again, Madison's definitely an interesting one. I like that she was kind of manipulative towards the one pregnant woman, you know? Um, and I think, I, th- I think it's one of those things where, um, um, oh my gosh, what was his name? Oh my gosh, Daniel. I, uh, uh, I think it was one of those things where Daniel might be right, where she might, she, she might, you know, sell any of them up the river to protect her family. Um, but because she helped Strand and she went out to go get Strand, it might be one of those things where it, it, it's interesting. It might be one of those things where she's, you know, hey, uh, I'm going to help the group. Or it's one of those things where we need Strand and everybody else can die. I don't care if Daniel dies. I don't care if uh, Ophelia dies. If my family's safe, well, you know, I don't care. I don't care. But we need Strand. So I'm going to go get Strand. Um, and speaking of Strand, we need to talk about him because we finally got to fully fully see his past and it was an interesting one it really really was an interesting one Uh, you know it was interesting to see that he's always kind of been this very interesting very unique very like a je ne sais quoi kind of kind of feel to this character he's he's had his moments before the apocalypse but he's still kind of one of those people that have lived in the apocalypse if that makes sense you know doing what he's been doing um which they they said a lot of stuff but i was still i'll be honest i'm i was still and still am a little bit confused about what he did what he did i i I believe he he bought real estate and bought land and then was gonna flip it and sell it over for a higher price but because katrina hit which i'm wondering if they're hinting that maybe something that happened with katrina uh caused the zombie apocalypse i don't know but you know you, you see him kind of defeated and bankrupt um but he still has his you know, he's drinking his problems away. He's he's very he's a very opportunistic type of person. And it was clear in the first season and it's it's more clear now. You know, he's always been this opportunistic person. You know, we kinda get the whole story about his, you know, father being um very much so a he you know, he his father was very much a strong figure in his life. 
And because, you know, that was, you know, his mother wasn't around. So, you know, his father was probably out all the time. And, and so Strand, we get, we get this backstory with, with Strand and it was interesting. And then he meets Tom or Thomas, he meets Thomas and that's, that, that's where, you know, I, cause, okay. I kind of had a feeling I had, I had a feeling when I was first seeing these two and they were leaning in and talking, I was like, Oh, I see where you're going, Fear. I see where you're going. Okay. Okay. Go, Strand. Go, Strand. You know, you go. You go. Um, But, you know, I kind of had a feeling that I kind of could see where it was going within the first couple minutes. I was like, oh, that's where that's going. Okay. Well, you know what? Awesome. Let's go to it. Let's get to it. I want to see. That makes sense. That makes sense why he wants to get where he wants to get so bad so so bad you know and 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 it's one of those things where he's been he's interesting i'm wondering because when we first meet thomas uh he's at the bar he's just talking you know thomas seems very much like strand like an opportunistic person and there's a really big part of me that feels that when strand stole his money stole his credit cards bought new clothes and everything i feel that was a little bit of a test As weird as it is, Thomas seems like one of those eccentric type people to where he was, he's like, okay, Strand, you're, you you clearly know, you, you, it's clear that you know the finer things of life. I mean, Strand said it himself, you know, he's, he's a student of the fine, which I, for me, I thought that was a little pretentious, but, um, who am I to say anything? Um, but no, so it's, it's, it's one of those things where I feel that Thomas was kind of testing him to say, Hey, do you have the, the cojones? To, to, to steal from me and let's see what happens Let, let's see what happens because I might not remember you gonna take that chance are you, are you gonna take that chance and he did he took that chance and then I, I, I felt because then especially when Thomas confronted him um later on uh when Thomas confronted him a little bit later on it was like yeah you know you, you stole my money and all you did was buy new clothes, I would have thought that you would have done so much more. You know, I would have thought the man of your stature would have done so, so much more. And, you know, Strand's like, well, you know, I bought new clothes, and within five years I can, you know, move up the ladder and be exactly back where I was, and I'll pay you back with interest. You know, think of it as a loan. And it was kind of one of those weird things where it's like he was testing Strand to see if he would go for it or if it it wasn't like he spent his money and bought like nice cars and stuff he invested it to make more money and I think that's kind of why Thomas was like okay you know what I'll allow this I'll allow this let's see where this goes let's see where this goes Strand and of course over time uh you know he was just like yeah you know you don't want to be back where you were uh I, I can see that you got gumption come work for me come work for me you 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 know what you're doing come work for me and oh then of course you know uh love is in the air and uh i don't know if it was more he was impressed with strand that one he had the cojones to do something two he wasn't like afraid when he showed up at the door he was just like come on in i'll get you your money back don't worry with interest i promise i just needed a little bit of money to get myself going you know um i I think thomas was very flattered with with strand because strand is one of those characters um now here's the one thing though too i don't know if strand because it looks like he wants to get he really wants to get to mexico to be with you know thomas abigail and everything like that um it really seems like that but i'm wondering and this was just kind of my thought i wasn't sure if anyone else picked up on it and and if you did please leave you know talk let me know because I'll be posting this on facebook.com slash STL dead air. Let me know what you thought about this and, and I'll be posting this on YouTube. So in the comments, comment section of you, you know, comic comment section of YouTube, I apologize. Let me know. But I thought strand was kind of manipulating him. I really kind of got the idea that strand liked him and, you know, you, you know, might've fallen in love with him a little bit, but I still feel it's kind of one of those things where strand is a very much opportunistic person. And if someone big and better comes along, like, Hey, I like you, let's, uh, let's do business. 
I'll be, you'll be making more money. You'll be doing this. He could very well just be like, okay, Abigail, Thomas, Abigail, uh, later. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Five thousand. It's been fun, but I'm gone. That that's at least kind of what I got from Strand. And I'm wondering if he is still manipulating uh, Thomas Abigail. And, and yes, he's fighting very, very hard to get back into Mexico to see him. But it's one of those things where it's like, I'm sure he knows who the Abigails are more than anybody else. He knows who the Abigails are. And I really think that he's, he's betting on the right horse, but if something better comes along, I could see him still taking it. That's my thought on strand. That's my thought on strand. He, it was interesting to see his backstory. It was fun to see his backstory. And now I'm even more curious to see where they're going to go because let's face it. Strand has been one of the most interesting characters that have come out of fear. One of the most interesting characters that come out of fear and almost every episode was, re- revolves around him. Um, and he's very much, he's, he's, he's funny. He's funny. I, I, I do like Strand. I, I do like Strand. He's definitely interesting to watch. So, but anyway, <laughs> that's, that's kind of my thoughts on Strand. He's interesting. He's fun. It was really cool to see his backstories, but I still feel that he's manipulating, uh, Thomas Abigail to kind of get what he wants. Um, now to move on to Alicia. What are you doing, Alicia? I want to personally know what are you doing? I can't tell. I can't tell. Normally I can pick up on these things. Normally I can pick up on these type of things. I mean, I've been watching Walking Dead for six years. Uh, I just started watching this. I can kind of pick up on these things because, you know, I... We, as fans of the shows, have come to uh, be like, okay, well, you're playing them or you're not. You know, we we kind of start getting the uh, the radar going if something, you know, the red flags start flying up and something, if something interesting is happening. But I can't tell if Alicia is really fooling Jack or not. I can't tell. I, I hope to God she is. I really hope to God she's go, saying, okay, look, he clearly has feelings for me. Feelings that, honestly, I don't think he should have. I think that's stupid. All of a sudden, he's like, I'll protect you. I'll do this. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, you don't, you, 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 ju- you, all you did was talk to her, and now all of a sudden, you're like, hey, I'll protect you, knowing full well you were going to rob her and her family. Knowing full well, I'm sorry, but you don't catch feelings with work. <laughs> you don't. That's just one of those things you don't do. You don't catch feelings with work. But it, it, it was just one of those things where I'm like, Alicia, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you actually that stupid or are you playing him? Because if you're playing him, kudos. I, I was even fooled. I was fooled. And I hope that happens. I hope she's playing him. I hope she's like, I'm going to kill these key. I'm going to kill these people. I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to kill these people, you know. Um, and that's the thing too, because I think I kind of trailed off with the pirates. I did not like the pirates at all. Uh, I felt that their one character, they were trying to make him like Negan-ish or the governor-ish and it fell short. You know, he's, he's a good, he's a good leader, but you know, he doesn't have the survival skills and stuff like that. It's one of those things where I didn't like him. I did not like him at all. I, he was very, very so much of a shallow villain. There was no real build up to him with, with the governor. We got to see him and we kind of got this build up of, okay, he's a bad guy, but then all of a sudden he's doing good stuff. And so you, you flip flop back and forth of, is the governor a good guy? Is the governor a bad guy? Uh, with Negan, we've had this complete build up with the saviors and everything with him, with this guy. It's, Boom, here we are, we're on the ship, and then boom, oh my gosh, there's this guy coming, he wants out of you, and he knows what he wants, and blah, 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 and it's like, I, you're a stupid villain. You're a stupid villain, I'm sorry, I, I'm not behind this guy, and when he dies, I don't care, but back to Alicia. Uh, Alicia, uh, you better not be pulling a Beth. I'm not saying that you don't deserve to die, everybody in this world is probably going to go one way or another. But one thing that I want, I want there to be more major deaths in the seer in, in, in fear because they haven't really killed off too many major characters. Walking dead. We lose favorite characters left and right. This we've had the same characters with no real dangerous consequences. I mean, there's never been this fear that they're not going to get out of it. If that makes sense. And that's different from like the walking dead 
where it's like, I trust Rick's group that they're going to get out of it. I trust Rick's group that they can handle it. It's one of those things where I, I feel that they that each of these characters have extreme, extreme plot armor. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. It just feels that these characters have extreme, extreme plot armor. And they're going to just keep keep on keeping on. You know, I don't. I hope that we get start, or that we start getting some consequences. I hope that we start getting some consequences for our actions, and I think Alicia, Alicia, uh, that's going to be one of them. I really think that that's going to be one of them. She's going to start having consequences because I feel that she's going to pull a bath, try to kill Jack, and then she's going to die. And I hope so. I hate to say that, but as of right now, she's just kind of been useless. She's been there, and she's got him in trouble. I don't care for this character. I don't I don't like this character. And if she died, I want to like her. But if she died, it's kind of like, okay, there we go. There we go. It's it's done. It's over. You died. Um and that's what happens in this world when you one try to act tough, improve yourself, and two think that you can handle a situation. Um I mean, look at Rick and his group. Season 6. I even said, you know, you you became you you became mercenaries. And you don't do that. You mess with the wrong people, and now this is the consequence that happens. And she's messing with the wrong people. Granted, I think they're stupid people. And they're low-tier villains, let me tell you. They're low-tier villains. And, I don't know. But, <laughs> predictions for next time. Uh, I really think that next time... I don't know why that one pirate's still running his mouth. After he got stabbed and everything, he's still running his mouth. He's like, you know... <laughs> My ba- my boss is gonna come, and he's go- he's gonna he's not gonna like what you did. It's like fool, you dead, you you're dead. Just stay down, stay down. You know, I hope that he dies off real quick. I, I think that they're gonna use him as a bargaining chip, or at least to find out where their base is. And I think we're gonna get an attack. And and what I could see happening, and God, I hope not. I hope they don't have a quote unquote another attack. Like they did with season one, where each season finale, they storm a place with a bunch of walkers and take over, you know, an area. Like I said, we only got three episodes left and it needs to start picking up. It needs to start picking up and it needs to start picking up soon. Because if not, I don't know. If if not, it, it needs to start picking up because like I've said, if the seasons are so short, and this is all you're going to give us, then there's nothing. There's there's really nothing to go on. And if it was part A of a season and then part B, maybe you could have a fully fleshed out story and I keep like, okay, yeah, now it's picked up and it's gotten good. It slowed down a little bit in the middle, but it's gotten good. But because it's so short, you haven't given us as much as we need. As much as we want. And that's what I'm looking for. And that, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, if fear, you're starting to get, you're, you're really starting to get to me. You're really starting to get to me. And I want, I want, I want to like you. I want to like you so bad. It's just, this episode was so good with what it did right. But then what it did wrong, it did it wrong very bad. It was, it it did, it, 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 and this is where I'm conflicted. This is where I'm conflicted. And real quick too, because we're almost out of time, but I need to talk a little bit about Louise. Louise was awesome. It's about time we actually see Louisa, Louise, I think that's his name. I don't know. The, 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 the guy that Nick picked up. Um, Finally. Finally, it is nice to see a badass. It is nice to see a badass that actually knows what he's doing. I loved it where you get the pirates and they're like all big and bad. It's like, hey, there's... Uh, somebody driving up to us and Louise is like what and Nick's just like oh man they got guns they got guns oh man what are we gonna do and Louise just pow pow snipes him and it's done and it's done and over with and I'm like about time it's about time we got some of that Louise don't die I want you to stick around I want you to be a main character because we need a character like that and I'm excited to see them go into with their backstory. It seems like, like I said, I don't know what they do still. Um, the Luis and, and, and Strand and, 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 and Thomas and them, I don't know what they do fully. But I'm interested to see where they go. I'm interested to see what they've done to to be able to have a fortified base. To be able to have a base that will 
out, you know, that's supposedly super safe and, and the means of, you know, Louis. Because it seemed like when we first met Louise, he was definitely a muscle man. He was definitely the muscle man. And now it definitely seems like he oh, he's kept that. And so it's about time we've gotten a character like that that knows how to fight, knows how to survive. And I'm excited to see where it goes. I, I, I am excited to see where it goes. Like I said, if, if it doesn't ramp up within the th- first within these next three episodes, then I'm going to say it was a mediocre season. Um, because like I said, part a, it would have been fine. Part B, you could have ramped it up a little bit more, but because it's so short, mediocre season right now, mediocre season right now, it's getting there. It's getting there, but it doesn't have enough time to get where it needs to go for where I feel it needs to be going. Unless they're having a weird season where they're going to have season one at the start like they had season one at the start of Walking Dead, uh, season two at the end of Walking Dead, and then season three at the beginning of Walking Dead, and then season four at the end of season seven of Walking Dead. If that makes sense. I could see them doing that. I think that's going to be kind of weird. I want it to stand out from The Walking Dead, and I want it to be something that we haven't seen before. Um, and to tell those stories at the first good couple months. And... I'm I'm holding out that it's going to be good. I'm holding out. It's definitely got me. It's definitely got me. But thanks, everybody, so, so much for tuning in. I had a blast. This episode will be up on Facebook.com slash STL Dead Air later tonight. And I'll see you all next week.